you went through, come on and say that there's nobody like you, Lord. Lord, I love my mother, but there's nobody like you. Lord, I love my daddy, I love my wife, I love my children, but there is nobody like you, Lord. Is there anybody can testify that there is nobody that you searched all over and you could not find anybody? Nobody won't put up with me like him. Nobody won't understand me like him. Nobody won't hold me like him. Nobody won't keep me like him. Nobody won't wipe my tears like him. And guess what I found out? Nobody will heal me like him. There is none like him. Oh my God. is where you get your strength. It is in that secret closet where you find that laughter and where you find that joy. It is in your secret closet is how you're able to make it through the day. And I don't know about you, but God is so awesome. God is so good. You may not have what you want, but how many of y'all can testify you got exactly what you need? Does anybody know you got just what you need? Oh my God. Matter of fact, if I were you, I would just, just reach up in the atmosphere right now and grab what you need right now. Grab what you need right now. I dare you to, I mean, it may look ridiculous to humanity, but it makes sense to God that you reach up and grab what you want. If you have to reach up and grab a fruit from the tree, why can't you not reach up and grab the fruit of the Spirit right now? I dare you to reach up and grab it right now because in that fruit is peace. In that fruit is joy. Reach up and grab it right now. I dare you to pick it from God's tree right now in the name of Jesus. And whatever you're going through, you begin to laugh about it because you understand that God is greater than your dilemma. Does anybody know we serve a great God? Oh my God. Come on, come on, come on. I hear y'all. I hear y'all. I hear y'all. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Promise.
want to give God a hand of praise. Welcome to Stonewell this morning where we're giving God all the glory, all the honor that he deserves. God is so awesome. Amen. Good morning to you all. I worship our Lord in spirit and truth. God is so good. God is so good. Amen. We're asking you right now. We have a few announcements that we want to let out first before we dive into other things. Amen. The first announcement we want to say first of all, happy birthday and happy anniversary to all those who are celebrating birthdays this week. So come on, make some horn noise for them. Amen. Happy birthday. Celebrate. 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 Amen. God is so good. God is so good. Happy birthday and anniversary. Amen. Also, too, I would like to announce to you all that it is time getting ready for Generation Day. Come on, make some noise for that. Amen. We thank God for that. You do know we ask all of our members to give $100 for that day. We're going to have it on the fourth Sunday of October. We have a wonderful, special, special treat for you all on that day. God is going to give us a blessed day, but we've got some things set up for that day. We're going to have a wonderful, wonderful hour of worship on the 24th uh, of August, October, on the 24th of October. So uh, teammates, to, uh, team captains, generation captains, uh, you will be getting a list today of all your people, so start contacting your people as well for that, and we're excited about that. As well as on uh, September the 24th, which is a Thursday, we're going to do a pop-up service, which is our pop-up 7-up service. Amen. Come on, give God a hand of praise for that. Amen. We're going to be right here in the parking lot for that, for our 7-up service. It is something our women's ministry has been doing every year, and we made up in our mind we're not going to let a thing called coronavirus hinder anything that God has in store. So come on, make some noise for that. Amen. Amen. We have seven wonderful anointed speakers that are going to be here on that night, and we're going to have a great time. Lord, for those of you who all don't know what 7-Up is, we get seven speakers, and they have seven minutes, amen, to just preach on a theme that, that is given to them, and we have a high time in the Lord. So we want you all to come and join us on uh, uh, September the 24th at 7. Uh, we're going to start at what time? We're going to start at 7? Seven? 7. 7. 24th. Se let me see. September the 24th. Seven speakers at seven o'clock. Got y'all. Got you. We're going to have a good time, good time, good time. So please, please put that on your calendar so we can have a wonderful high time in the Lord for that as well. Also, too, we want you all to understand, too, to continue to pray for our church, our community, our county, our city, and our country as well. Also, too, as well, we want you all to know that we have also asked a few of our leaders to call all of our members. So if you got a phone call this week letting you know we're thinking about you, we're praying for you, we want you to know that we have not forgotten you. Facebook as well, if you all have gotten some calls from somebody, if you have not gotten one, you will be receiving one soon to let you know that we at Stonewell, we miss you, we love you, and we invite you to come and worship with us on our parking lot right here at 204. Don't we have a good time out here, y'all? Don't we have a good time? Good time. Good time. Good time. In the Lord. Amen. Also, too, it is now time for our giving. It's time for our giving. I want y'all to know I was really pleased with our Stay Woke Revival. Amen. I believe God truly blessed us on our Stay Woke Revival. I thank God blessed us tremendously. And thank God for that. And if also, too, before we do that, if you have not moved over to our Stonewell Nation page, please, please move over to our Stonewell Nation page. Stonewell Nation on Facebook. Go to Stonewell Nation and follow us right there. It is going to allow us to reach so many more people. So please, ma'am, please, sir, even right now, why, I'm going to give you some other prompts to do for giving, but also to after your giving, if you got a few minutes, you'll find us already on Stonewell Nation page as well. All right, for your giving, it is time for our giving. So if you would like to give by way of virtual giving, you can do it by Cash App, and that is dollar sign SWWC 2015. Also, too, if you want to give by our Givelify, you can find Stonewell Worship Center right there on our Givelify. Find the prompts, and you can give at that moment. If you have dollars and cents, we do have our folks out there with buckets because we no longer have a basket mentality. Amen. We understand that we're about to reach into this storehouse, this uh, uh, well, and we're going to pull some things up. So if you have dollars, you can see those individuals with the buckets as well. You can drop it by right here in the slot if you are on the property as well. We thank God for what you been, God has been doing in your life. Thank you so much for your giving. Let us not forget that in all of our giving, get some understanding, and we can no longer do what we do. Amen. Without the power and the presence of God. So if you have your card, hold it up. Somebody will come by. Amen. And swipe that for you. If you have an envelope, somebody will come by. Hold it up high. Hold it up high so they can see you. Amen. Amen. God is so good. God is so good. God is so good. Amen. Also, 
if you want to mail it to us, P.O. Box 1552, Thomas and Georgia 30286. Put it in the mail, send it to us. Amen. So a seed in strong well today. We thank you so much for what God is doing in your life. And we believe by faith that it could not and would not be done without God. gracious and awesome God we thank you for your blessings God thank you for giving us a sense to know that the seeds that we are sowing today in this anointed soil will not go on board because your word said you will bless some 30 some 60 100 and even some 100 fold you know what category we all fall in God we fall in that 100 fold so now God do what the word says is going to do bless us abundantly not just monetarily but physically spiritually and even mentally oh God you know what we need. Now, God, allow us to be good stewards over that which you've given us. Allow this to be used for the upbuilding of your kingdom and deduction and demise of Satan's kingdom. It is in the name of Jesus we do pray and every heart said amen. Now, if you believe it, reach up and grab it. Put it across your chest and claim it. Put your hands together and thank God for it. Amen. Thank you all so much. Amen. Amen. As well, I want to uh, let you all know uh, that we're going to, as I give you all this text and I pray I'm going to pray for those individuals who are sick those who are shut in those who are going through some things amen I won't call names out but they know who they are and we want you to know that we are continuing to pray for them thank y'all so much y'all good amen thank you so much um also too so if you have your Bibles would you please turn with me um, you have your Bibles turn with me to Genesis the 19th chapter starting at the 15th verse and I pray, pray and hope and believe and pray that you all have been joining us in our reading the Bible for a year plan. Let me tell you something. It has been a joy to me to continue to go over, start over myself. I have really been, it's really been a blessing to me. And for those individuals who are on the road in the mornings when you're driving, I ask you and, and employ you to turn Ricky Smiley off and turn Steve Harvey off or whatever or news radio that you're listening to for one moment. Uh, there is an app that you can use on the on on the on your phone called U Version, and you can pull that app up and you can ask it to give you a plan. And when you hit that plan, you don't even have to read it. All you have to do is push play while you're driving, uh, and it will read for you. And so we're asking you all, in some way, somehow, in your daily living and your daily walk, get some word on the inside of you. Trust me, your days will be better and brighter. Wherever you go, whatever environment that you're about to go in, if you go in with the word, that environment cannot overcome the word that you have on the inside of you. Amen. And so I ask you all to start doing that as we read this year. It's not too late. Join in. You can catch up or even go along with your speed. But by this time next year, I want Stonewell to have read the Bible from cover to cover. 
if we can look at binge watching on Netflix during the, during this uh, coronavirus when we will all stay at shelter in place, if we can uh, binge watch on some things like that, our favorite shows and watch them, surely we ought to binge read on the word. Amen. And so I ask you all to please join us as we continue to read God's word. If you have Genesis uh, 19, the 19th chapter, please turn with me there, start at the 15th verse. Amen. Now let us pray. Most gracious and awesome God, as we come before you right now, we thank and praise you for all that you are doing in all of our lives. God, we understand that we could not do this thing called life without you. We thank you, O oh God, because you give us strength day to day. I thank you because there were some of us who did not know what Sunday was going to look like last Monday. But it was by your grace and your mercy you brought us through. And God, I speak right now that we are children of the Most High God that wherever we go, God, our environment will change. There are two things my daddy taught me the word will do. It will either draw you or drive you. Now, God, draw those who are drawn, draw them to us as those are drawn to you. But God, anybody who uh, does not like your word or does not like your love, then drive them out of our lives and out of our space. God, we speak right now a spirit of unity like never did before in the body of Christ. We ask you, O oh God, to let these words from these words today fall not on dry ground, but on fertile ground in our hearts, that it may catch root, and that we will see ourselves resembling you in no matter what we do. I plead the precious blood of Jesus upon this word today, upon my life. So God, don't hide me behind the cross, but stand up in me so others can see you in me. I speak a healing today for those individuals who are in the hospital those who are on their sick bed, those who are in the nursing home, incarcerated, God, we ask you right now, there is no place, no wall too thick for you to go through. There is no protocol, no sign, signature page, a sign-in page that you got to sign to get in any building. God, but I ask you right now to allow the Holy Spirit to walk in and up and down every hall right now, God. And as you walk down, healing shall take place. Deliverance shall take place right now. God, I speak right now, those who were rolled in by way of ambulance, those who were rolled in by way of gurney, God, I speak right now that they were rolled in, but they shall walk out. I speak right now that God that you will give them a supernatural strength right now that they are sitting up in their beds right now God I give you ask you to give them a supernatural healing that they now understand what day it is God I ask you to give them a supernatural healing knowing that God didn't nobody do it but you no matter how good the doctor was it was you no matter how good the nurses was it was you no matter how good the gods treated them it was you no matter how good the staff treated God it was you now God be God all by yourself stand up in these places right now stand up in our home stand up in facebook right now that we will know that you are god and god alone that god that your name is above every name you are king of kings and lord of lords we bow down to you right now god in our bowing there shall be healing in our bowing there shall be relief in our bowing there shall be a humbleness in our bowing there shall be a deliver and a release right now release your glory release your power right now god i declare and decree by the blood of jesus everybody who have turned their backs have gotten caught you God that they will now towards you and say father I stretch my hand to thee God have your way today God you do it right now move every personal agenda out the way and be the main agenda in all of our lives right now remove hate remove spite God remove uh, and uh, God we ask you to remove iniquities right now remove separation remove division God we ask you to do it right now I claim it right now and I plead the blood of Jesus. Every heart said amen. Amen. And amen. Come on and give God a hunger praise right now. Hallelujah. If you believe it shall be so, come on. Come on, come on, come on. Hallelujah. Declare and decree that God is healing right now. Declare and decree that God is making a way right now. Declare and decree. Give me that right there. Hallelujah, Jesus. In the name of Jesus, if you have the word, thank you so much. Amen. We're starting in Genesis, the 19th chapter, starting at the 15th verse. Listen what it says. My version differs from yours. I'm reading from the New International Version. It says... 
With the coming dawn, the angels urged Lot, saying, hurry, take your wife, your two daughters, who are here, or you will be swept away when the city is punished. I like this part. I want y'all to hear this. When he hesitated, the men grasped his hand and the hand of his wife and the hands of the two daughters and led them safely out of the city. For the Lord was merciful to them as soon as they had brought them out. One of them said, flee for your lives. Don't look back. Don't stay anywhere in the plains. Flee to the mountains or you will be swept away. As soon as he had brought them out, brought them out. One of them said, flee for your lives. Don't look back. It says, don't look away. It says, flee to the mountain or you will be swept away. That was verse 17 again. I want y'all to hear that. I want y'all to hear that. But Lot said to them, no, my Lord, please, your servant has found favor in your eyes. And you have shown great kindness to me by sparing my life. But I can't flee to the mountain. The disaster will overtake me and I will die. Look, there is a town near enough to run to. It is small. Let me flee to it. It is very small, isn't it? Then my life will be spared. The angel said, very well, I grant you the request too. I will not overthrow the town you speak of, but flee quickly because I cannot do anything until you reach it. That was why the town was called Zora. By the time Lot reached Zora, the sun had risen over the land. The Lord rained down burning sulfur on Sodom and Gomorrah for the Lord out of heaven, from the Lord out of heaven. Thus he overthrew though these cities and the entire plain, destroying all the living creatures and also vegetation in the land. But Lot's wife looked back and she became a pillar of salt. For the time in his mind, I want to simply preach the topic, don't look back. Brothers and sisters, in order to get an appreciation for this particular text, you can only get appreciation for this text is when you look at Genesis 6, chapter 6 through 9 through chapters 9 through 17. It is simply where God is having a conversation with Noah and God is telling Noah that he is so sick of the wickedness of the world that he is going to destroy the world. And he tells Noah to build an ark. And not only does he tell him to build an ark, but he tells him to bring his family in. He tells him to bring all two of each living creatures into the ark and allowing them to build this ark. And the Bible says, and you do know from Sunday school, that the Bible says God told them it was going to rain for 40 days and for 40 nights. And the moment that the Bible says that the last creature and the last person entered the ark, the Bible says not Noah shut the ark, but the Bible says that God shut the door of the ark and the rains came. But this is it's quite interesting that when people understand when it started raining, they say that rain was new on the earth at that time. And people began to see this strange water coming from heaven that people began to run from all over and beat on the ark asking Noah to let them in. But the Bible says that God would not allow the door to be open and all of a sudden we understand that the flood came and it wiped out of all of humanity except Noah and his family. We understand that Noah was on the waters for 40 days and for 40 nights. And Noah sent out the uh, raven and the raven went out and never came back. And also he sent the dove out. The dove went out, brought an olive branch. But the last time he went out, he did not come back as well. And shortly thereafter, they found land. I'm trying to go somewhere. I hope y'all hear me. The Bible says that when God allowed the waters to recede, he gives a covenant to Noah by the rainbow that was in the sky saying that he would never destroy the earth with water again. And so God, now we hear that nine chapters later, here is God now seeing two cities, not the whole world, but he see two cities who are dealing with so much demonic forces that God himself is so upset with Sodom and Gomorrah that he is now there are two things that God does in chapter 18 what he does first part of chapter 18 is that he tells Abraham and Sarah that they're going to have a child Sarah laughs and all of a sudden he says that they're anything too hard for God and they have a conversation but while now God and his angels were leaving they were headed toward Sodom and God heard, pondered in his heart should I share what's about to happen to Sodom and Gomorrah to Abram and all of a sudden God shared that he was going to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah. Oh my God, I want y'all to hear this. All of a sudden, Abram understood the people in Sodom and Gomorrah were wicked, but guess what 
Abraham does. He begins to have a debate with God, Brother Shaw. And people think that you can't talk to God. That's what bothers me about people. That Abraham had a conversation with God for a moment about what God was going to do, Minister Bentley. And all of a sudden, Abraham says to, Abraham says to God, God, please don't destroy the city. He says, if you find at least 50 righteous people in Sodom and Gomorrah, will you please spare the city? God, who said that he was going to destroy, he looks at Abraham and says, if I find at least 50, I will not destroy the city. Abraham knew that it was not 50 righteous people in the city. And Abraham said, well, at least will you do 45? God said, well, yeah, if I find 45, I won't spare it. He said, well, I don't believe, I believe Abraham said, I'm really stretching. He said, what if you find 30? He said, if I find 30 there, I won't stretch it. Oh my God, Titus, you need to come on and follow me for a minute. Sometimes in your life, when you're going through some things in your life and all hell is about to break through, God begins to say, tell you the reason why I have not destroyed you yet is because there are some things that you did in the midst of some stuff you were going Is there anybody in the house that can give God a praise right now that God did not destroy you because you gave God at least 10 minutes out of your day? Oh my God. You probably didn't give God the whole 24 hours, but you got down on your knees and said, Lord, spare me. And it was that quick predicate. Oh my God. Is there anybody know you didn't do all that you needed to do for God? But aren't you glad God kept you just for the little thing that you did? You ought to give God a prayer right now just for the little things that you I may not be saved like my mama. I may not be saved like my daddy. But God is still working on me. Just look at your neighbor and say, just, just a little. Oh, just, just, just give him a little. Oh my God, I'm about to run. Do you not understand that God kept you alive? Oh my God, there were some people that prayed all night long and there was still some stuff happening to them. But look at you right now. God kept you in your right mind because of a little. He kept your children because of a little. God kept you. Oh my God, when I think of the goodness of Jesus and all that he's done, me, my soul get... Oh my God, I dare you to look back over your life and understand the time that you spent over here, the time that you spent over there, the time that you spent with her, the time that you spent with him never added up to the time that you spent with God, and God still led your life. You ought to give up. He walked out. She walked out. But God stayed with you. He said, if you find, Mike, he told him, he said, okay, even if you find 20, I spare it. He even said, he said to him as he kept walking, he said, Abraham, even if I find 10, I spare it. Evidently, there were not 10 righteous people in two towns for him to spare. Oh, my God. Can I help somebody? In the strange, but Pete, in the strange, but Greg, how, oh my God, isn't it strange, Jonathan? How our world is in chaos everywhere you go. And we ask ourselves when we see things that are detestable to God, why has not God destroyed the world? Why has God not done some things in the world? And the reason why God has not done some things to the world, you ought to point to your neighbor for a moment and say the reason why God has not destroyed the world is because I've got a little righteousness in me. Is there anybody in the house that may say, I may not know the Bible from front to back, but I got some righteousness in me. I may not know all the books in the Bible, but I got some righteousness in me. I may not know the major prophets or the minor prophets, but I got some righteousness in me. I may not know the 12 disciples, but I got some righteousness in me. I probably can't pronounce the names in the Bible, but I got some righteousness in me. I probably don't know all the songs of the choir and the play team, but I got some righteousness in me. Is there anybody in the house that can give God a praise that you got some righteousness in you? And the reason why we have not been destroyed yet is because you got some righteousness in you. Look at your righteous sister. Look at your righteous brother and say, I'm so glad I got some righteousness in me. I'm so glad I got some righteousness in me. I got the righteous to throw your head back and say, righteousness. Righteousness, righteousness, I got it on the inside of me.
my text yet. Y'all stop cutting up. I ain't even got to my text yet. Y'all stop cutting up. Um, the Bible says that God leaves Abraham. And Abraham returns home. Uh, and the Bible says now as you begin to go over to chapter 19. Uh, the Bible says that the three angels or the three men go over to Sodom and Gomorrah. And all of a sudden there's a man named Lot. My God. Who is sitting at the gate. And he recognized them when they show up. And the Bible says he prostrates himself to them. And he says to them, y'all come stay at my house. I want to stop right there for a minute and let you know that sometimes in your life, Lot chose this. And understand who Lot is. I'm glad y'all asked that question. Lot was Abraham's nephew. Lot went with him when Abraham left home. And Abraham got so blessed. And Lot got blessed because he was connected to Abraham. So much that their herd began to mix each other. So much that their servants start fighting on who belongs to who. And Abraham goes to Lot and says, Lot, you choose where you want to go. He says, whatever you choose. He says, I'm going the other direction. Well, hey, Lot had the chance to look at the mountains. And he had a chance to look towards Sodom and Gomorrah. Can you see Lot looking at the lights of Sodom and Gomorrah? Can you see him looking at the lights of Atlanta? Saying, I want to go there. I don't want to be in the country. I don't want to be in a small town. So he got hooked up to the lights. And Lot says, I'll take the plane. And Abraham said, I'll take the mountain. Can I put a pin right there for a minute? The reason why you bless and the reason why you bless is because we have an Abrahamic anointing. Y'all don't understand what that means. Can I tell y'all what Abrahamic anointing means? It means what Abraham said. You can choose whatever you want to go. But wherever I go, the Lord don't bless me. Don't folks get mad at you because you shut a business down somewhere else. But you're prospering in the new spot. Brother Mike, can I testify to you for a minute? There you was on Bethel Street. I mean on Barnesville Highway. And all of a sudden, they were tripping over there. And you said, I'm going to close down this location. The owner thought that you weren't going to survive. The owner thought your business was going to close. But you went back to where you came from. You went back to the small little street that you came from. And when you opened up your door, God blessed you tremendously. Is there anybody in the house glad you got an Abrahamic anointing that wherever you are, the Lord will be right there. I don't know about you, but I believe that God has given her Stonewell and Abraham and anointed with me when Stonewell and blessed and promises. But when Stonewell go to North Georgia, we will be blessed. When we go to South Georgia, we will be blessed. When we go to Florida, we will be blessed. When we go to New York City, D-Lo, we will be blessed. When we go to the Midwest, we will be blessed. When we go to California, Cali, here we come. We shall be blessed. The reason why we're going to be blessed is because we got Abraham and anointing all over you. You want to give God a praise and say, wherever I set my foot, I will be blessed. If I set it in the north, I'll be blessed. If I set it in the south, I'll be blessed. If I set it in the east, I'll be blessed. If I set it in the west, I'll be blessed. We will be blessed. All of a sudden, here we are now, Lot is in a city that God is about to destroy. And the Bible says that when the three men get there, they come, Lot says to them, stay at my house. And I'm going to be real with y'all, this is not a PG text. He says, stay at my house. And the three men said, no, we're going to sleep in the square. And Abraham said, I mean, Lot said to them, no, no, no. You can't sleep in the square here. You got to come to my house. And all of a sudden, when we find out that when the men, they say the women, it said when the men, the old men and the young men saw these men, they saw how beautiful they was. They saw how regal they was. It said the young men and the old men was attracted to them. The Bible says, the Bible says that, that, Ab I mean, that Lot pulled them into his house. And the men, old men, and the young men, pedophile, pedophilia, all what you want to call it, they saw them and they wanted them to the point that they went to Lot's door. And they started bamming on the door. Said, let
let them out. I want to sleep with them. Let them out. We want to have sex with them. And all of a sudden, Lot said, no, no, no. He said, because they under my roof. Now, Lot does something to let you know how he understood who these men were. Lot goes out the door, holding the door behind him. And there was a mob in front of him. And Lot said, before I let these men, I'll give y'all my daughters. I want y'all to hear this. I'll give you a woman before you get these men. And the men say, we don't want no woman. We want the men you got in your house. Can I stop by sometime to let you know you better be careful of even the men you live in your life. You better be careful of your men's friends. You be better. It ain't just women that want your men. It's the men that want your men. It ain't just women that want your husband. It's the women that want your wife. And here you are praying for a heterosexual spirit. You got to pray for every spirit that come in your You think they watching you and they watching them. They just my friend. You better be careful of the friends you hang around. They just my friend. Oh, they just my friend. You better be careful of who your friends are. That's one thing I'm not crazy about Facebook is because they use that word friend too light. That in order for somebody to be on your page, they got to be your friend. And you just want to have numbers on your page. And you don't care who you get on your page. And all these folks, you got friends. What you're doing is you're allowing these other spirits into your virtual house. Can I tell y'all what you need to do today? It's time for you to clean your virtual house out today. Don't wait for spring. Don't wait for summer. Clean it out today. Here we are. Here we are. The men in the house, Lot spared their lifetimes. And all of a sudden, the men share with him. He says, Oh my God, here we go. The men says to him, We got to get you out of the city because God is about to destroy the town. Now I got to help y'all for a minute. You got to understand that God said he would spare the city if there was 10 righteous people. And there are some people who tell you he would spare the city uh, if over one righteous person. But we never understood a lot when they're righteous. Number one, well, you don't need to look back. Number one, you got to understand that there was a reason for Lot's rescue. What's the reason for Lot rescue, Pastor? Because it does not talk about his relationship with Lot. It does not talk about his relationship with God. But Lot was not saved because of his relationship with uh, God. But Lot was saved because he was related to Abraham. Oh my God. Do you not understand the only reason why Lot was saved, the reason why he was saved in midst of the rescue, is because of who he was connected to. Don't you understand that who are you connected to sometimes can help you and sometimes it can hurt you. Oh my God. I I will never forget there was one time when one of my children got pulled over by the police they went in thomas and george and he understood he saw the tag said coleman dumas and all of a sudden before he went to the car and talked to my child he said pastor dumas i got your car on the side of the road they were speeding a little bit too fast he said but before i go to the car i wanted you to know that i got him to the side of the road he already told me what he was going to do to him before he got there he said i ain't gonna lock him up he said but the reason why I'm calling you is because she's your daughter. And the reason, oh my God, he said the reason why I'm not going to lock her up is because she belongs to you. Is there anybody in the house know that sometimes some of the trouble you get in, you get out of because you're connected to? Don't you understand? There's some demons in hell that tried to get to you, but they couldn't get to you because of your connection. You want to give God a praise? I'm connected. I'm connected. reason for the rescue but when you get the verse y'all I'm, I'm so excited about this text when you get to verse 15 they tell them to leave look at the text it says uh, that they hesitated destruction was coming but they hesitated hold on definitely destroyed the city it was gonna be laid in ruins but they hesitated uh, can I tell y'all 
when you look at the text, the shouting part of the text is that sometimes God will rescue you when you don't want to be rescued. What you mean, Pastor Dumas? What you mean? When you take the time to look at the text, the text says, oh, I like mama getting out the car. Mama said, this word too good. I got to get out the car. She been going through some stuff, but she said, I got to get up and get out the car. Somebody got to have a mama spirit every now and then. And say, I just need to get a little closer to the word. Sometimes sitting in the car just won't work for me. Mama said, I used to run every now and then. Mama said, I used to shout every now and then. She told her daughter when she looked at her neighbor, she said, neighbor, get me out of this car. Because God did too good to me. She just walked into her healing. She is sitting in the presence. Okay, let me notice this. Uh, still, uh, there's a reason for the rescue. Connection. Uh, I like this. Because God honors covenant so much. God honors covenant so much. That because of the covenant he has with Abraham, God tells him he's going to bless his seeds and his family. Now, if God had not rescued Lot, God's word wouldn't have went boy, Mike. And so what God says, even when your your kin folks don't want to be blessed, even when your kin folks don't want to be saved, even when your kin folks don't want to be loved, can I tell y'all what the angel did? The angel said, even though you're hesitating, the Bible said the angel grabbed them by their hand. He didn't just grab Lot by his hand, he grabbed Lot right by their hand. And the other angels grab their children and say, we're about to get out of here. Is there anybody in the house glad that sometime when you were in the club, that you didn't want to leave, but that was about to start shooting, and there was something that grabbed you up out of there? I'm so glad that God got a pulling spirit on me, that he pulled me out of some stuff that I shouldn't have been anyway. If you ain't got nothing that's a shot about it, aren't you glad that he pulled you out? He pulled you out. for the rescue there's a reason for the rescue the reason why Lot and his family were rescued simply because they were connected to Abraham you got to understand there's some people let me help y'all I'm going to speak prophetically in your spirit there's some folks they want you to break your covenant with Stonewell. What they think they doing over there. If I were you, I wouldn't go to no parking lot. If I was you, I wouldn't go. Who Pastor Dumas think he is? He ain't all that. Pastor Dumas ain't never said that. But the enemy put all this stuff in your mind. He'll put all this stuff in your mind for you to break your covenant. And don't you understand the reason why you're still living? Is it because of the connection of the anointing you got over your life? You keep listening to folks who are about to leave here and die anyway. And you... Don't miss this in the text. He says, God is going to destroy them with sulfur from the sky. Oh my God, y'all missed it. God understood that he could not wipe out in the entire humanity or the human race this time because although there, there were not any righteous people in Sodom and Gomorrah, he still had to spare everybody. Oh my God. He still had to spare everybody else. I want y'all to understand something. And guess what the angel tells him? See, even Lot says to them, he says, go to the mountain. He said, well, I can't make it to the mountain. I'm going to go somewhere. He said, I can't make it to the mountain. He says, but because if I try to make it to the mountain, the smoke will overcome me. He said, the suffer will overcome 
overcome me and I won't make it and I'll die. He said, but just grant me enough strength to get to the next town. Oh my God, that town was named Zora. Can I tell y'all what that Zora, that Zora means? Zora means small town. Oh my God, don't you understand that here we are in a small town, that there's some other stuff being destroyed all around us, but God is sparing us right now. Somebody want to go to the big city if they want to. The last time I checked, they burning in Oregon. They burning in the Midwest. They burning up north. They burning down south. But look at us in this small town. God is sparing us. Is there anybody can give God praise that we may not have skyscrapers, but we connected to the skyscraper in the sky? You ought to give God praise. We still got peace. We still got prosperity. We still smiling. I don't see no smoke nowhere. Come on and give God a praise because God is fetching. God, you want to give God praise? Not only that, not only that, he says, here we go. Here is the synopsis of my text. He says to them, go, but don't look back. But what else he tells them this? He says, I want y'all to hear what God does. He says, we cannot destroy the city until you leave. <laughs> he says, not one drop of sulfur or fire will hit this city or the town of Sodom and Gomorrah until we get you out. <laughs> oh my God, y'all missing it. He said, basically it is, the reason why we have not destroyed it yet is because of your connection with Abraham. And Abraham had a force field, not only over his crop and his family and his servants, but because you're connected to him, the force field was over you too. And what God says is, I've got to keep my word to Abraham and so i got to get you out. And so God says, even though I'm going to destroy the city, I'm not going to destroy it till you get out. But when you get out, don't you dare look back. Number two, let me help y'all with it for a minute. You ain't got to even pick them up. I'm good. Number one, there is a reason for the rescue. But number two, there was a rebellion in the rescue. He says, what's the rebellion? I'm glad y'all asked that question. The rebellion is he says to them, don't look back. Now, Reverend Drains and I had a wonderful theological discussion on this. We were riding to Atlanta yesterday and I was telling him about my text about this part, that the angel said, don't look back. He said, well, Pastor, let me ask you a question. In the human nature for us to look back when some noise is going on? In the human nature for us to turn around to see what's going on? I said, yeah, that's a point you make. Very valid, Reverend Drains. And I want you to hear me on Facebook, Reverend Drains, because I let you say it yesterday, but I wanted to address it today. First of all, let me help you to take a theological leap into the New Testament, because Paul says, we wrestle not with flesh and blood, but with principalities. And sometimes, no matter how much your flesh tell you to turn around, oh my God, can I help somebody for a moment? It ain't your spirit that tell you to go back to him at 3 o'clock in the morning. It ain't your spirit that tell you to call her at 2 o'clock in the morning. It ain't your spirit that tell you to lay down with Tom, Dick, and Harry. It ain't your spirit that tell you to lay down with Sanitary you, but when your spirit tells you not to look back, you can't look back. And want y'all to understand it. God is trying to tell you, I delivered you from a relationship. I delivered you from your bills. I delivered you from some situations. And because you prayed when you were in your situation, God pulled me out my situation. And now that God has pulled you out, God is trying to tell you, don't you dare look back. Is there anybody who made a declaration that God, when you get me out all I'm going to do is keep on looking forward. I'm not going to look at my broken heart. I'm not going to look at all the nights I slept. I'm not going to look at all the hurt I had. I can't look back. There's a rebellion in the text below. Uh, what the rebellion is, is that he said this to me. He says, Pastor Dumas, it was her nature that kept me her look back. I said, well, Reverend Drains, if that's so how is it that when we look at the text that the man said, the angel said, don't look back. I want y'all to get this. I want y'all to get this. Sandra, I want y'all to get this. He says, I want y'all to get this. Mama, I want y'all to get this. Teen, teen, I want you to get this. He says this. He says, Pastor Dumas, 
Well, I said, Drain, I let you talk, now let me talk. He said, What I'm trying to say, I said, No, 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 I let you talk, let me talk. I said, The angel gave all of them the instructions not to look back. Isn't it strange that Lot didn't look back? Isn't it strange that the daughters didn't look back? But ever, he said, But evidently, it was something in Sodom and Gomorrah that made her look back. Well, I said, Sometimes something will get you killed. Don't you understand that sometimes in your life, you can't be rebelling on what the word says that when God tells you don't do it child don't you dare do it and sometimes we try to find loopholes in what God's trying to tell you well God told me not to go over there but he didn't tell me not to call God told me not to call but he didn't tell me not to drive by God told me not to sin he didn't tell us not to work out together God told me not to sin but he didn't tell me I couldn't go to their job and get some business sometimes what God is trying to tell you is don't you dare look back I won't be rebellious in this when God speaks to me let everything Stay behind you. Paul said, I keep my eyes to the hills. We're coming my help from the Lord. And all my help will. Number one. Number one, that was reason. Number two, that was rebellion. And rebellion e means disobedient. Oh my God, disobedience. What that was is if we can tell our children not to do something, there's repercussions of that. And because there was rebellion, uh, there was disobedience. But can I help y'all with something that all of us, notice I didn't say y'all. There's something that all of us deal with, Brother John. Sister, Sister Ham, Sister Connie, let me tell y'all what, what, what we all deal with, Sister Connie. We always deal with one more time. I hear the birds chirping. We always say one more time. Evidently, we understand that she wanted to look back one more time. There are some of us that want to smell the cologne one more time. Some of us want to smell the perfume one more time. Can I help y'all with the fragrance situation? If you know what he smelled like, won't you just go over to the mall and buy the cologne that he smelled like? Spray it on your pillow and say, Lord, I'd rather hold this pillow of the cologne than to hold the person that's got the cologne on. Why? Because when I hold the person, I'm holding a rebellious spirit. And Lord, I don't want to be disobedient to you anymore. So if they smell like polo red, go buy some polo red. Matter of fact, I dated by red, black, and green. In case you want to switch up every now and then. Well, if she wears Chanel, buy Chanel, Gucci, and some other perfume. Sometime in your life, you got to say, Lord, I refuse to be disobedient to you. Is there any Anybody that made up in their mind during these last days that we are not going to be disobedient. God is not calling for a rebellious spirit. We can no longer rebel. We've got to obey what God is telling us. Number one, there's a reason in the rescue. Number two, there's a rebellion in the rescue, her disobedience. Number three, there's retribution in the rescue, which means that when she turned back, God did not tell her what she would face. But she understood one more time, got her killed. The retribution was when she disobeyed God, God turned her into a pillar of salt. Let me help somebody. There are some people who will tell me, I told you God was merciful in the Old Testament. I told you God was strictly right down the middle in the Old Testament. And I got to stand on the other side to let you know God is so merciful. Well, Pastor Duma, how can you tell me he merciful when he turned this woman into a pillar of salt? Well, he gave a chance when the men showed up at the house. He gave her a chance when she told him, when he told him to leave, but he had to grab her out. He gave her a chance when they did not have to go to the mountain, but they went to a small town. He gave her a chance by giving her a warning, don't she look back. But she had to go one more time. I want to speak to somebody right now. God is declaring the decree right now that whatever you did yesterday, I dare you declare the decree to say it was the last time. It was the, oh my God, do I have anybody have to say, they say God has even protected me in my foolishness. He protected me in all my mess. And you got to say God bless me today to say that was the last time is there anybody in store where they can open up their mouth lay your hands on their horn and say this is the last time God you killed me this is the last time this is the oh my I dare you to sing I dare you to shout it I dare you to make your no, I know I know okay let me help y'all let me help y'all uh, 
The Spirit just told me to tell y'all something. See, y'all six feet from everybody. Even though you got your mask on, I need to pull your mask down and declare it with your own mouth. I need to be real so the devil can hear you say, this is, oh, I need to just pull your mask down right where you Don't look at nobody. Look straight ahead. Pull your mask down and say, this is the the rescue. There's a rebellion in the rescue. There is retribution in the rescue. And it is said that if you look at the mountains between the old Sodom and Gomorrah and Zipporah and the Mount of Moab, there is a mountain that is shaped like a woman who's on her knees who was facing the old Sodom and Gomorrah. Can I help somebody? Don't let your last posture be in the direction of what killed you. At least let them see you running in the other direction. That means don't dare get shot in the chest. Get shot in the back because what you're saying is, I'm getting away from that which can hurt me. I'm telling you to run from a, a abusive relationship. No longer have bruises in your face. You ought to have them in your back because you're running from a situation. You got to make up in your mind that I'm not going to do this any longer. You ought to lay on your horns and make a declaration around Thomas Little. Number one, there's a reason for the rescue. Number two, there's a rebellion in the rescue. Number three, there is retribution in the rescue. But number four, when God and the angels pulled them out of Sodom and Gomorrah. Then the Bible says, I got to go back. Notice that Sodom and Gomorrah was not destroyed by water. Because God understood his covenant that he made in Genesis uh, 9 through 18. But I want y'all to understand something. God did not destroy the world. But he destroyed, this is what he said. He said, the next time I do it, it'll be by fire and brimstone. And God had to keep God's word that Sodom and Gomorrah were destroyed, not by water this time, but by the fire and sulfur that came from heaven. And you must understand, God is letting you know that he is still not going to put up with wickedness. But he ain't going to wipe them out like he did last time. Good apples ain't going to suffer for the bad apples. God said, what I'm going to do is I'm going to destroy the bad apples and keep the good ones alive. Is there anybody in the to say I may not have been a good apple but whatever I need to do to be good Lord help me to be good number one there's a rescue because of the connection number two rebellion because of the disobedience number three there's retribution because she turned into a pillar of salt but here they are and I can hear you all saying this what happened when you God pulls you from one place number four there's a relocation in the text. Oh my God. Notice that when we move, we have to rent U-Hauls and we have to rent budget moving vans and ask somebody to borrow their truck because we are moving our furniture from one location to another location. That's uh, the humanity version of moving. It's exciting, but can I help y'all with God's moving? God moving says that when I pull you out of a place and you don't bring anything with you, God says when I relocate you this time, not only am I going to provide, oh my God, not only am I going to move for you, but not only am I going to protect you, but God says I'm going to provide for you. Only thing Lot left with was the clothes on his back and his family, but God relocated him. Pastor Dumas, how in the heaven did Lot start back up everything? He had he had cattle, he had sheep, he had all this stuff, he had houses, he had camel, he had servants, but did none of them survive? Pastor Dumas, where is the shout in the relocation progress process? And I knew y'all were going to ask this question, but the shout is, you got to go back to number one to get the shout. Because although Sodom and Gomorrah was destroyed, the connection to Abraham still was alive. Is there anybody in the house know, as long as you connected to Abraham, our father God, everything he got you guys sometimes the reason why we won't move is because we tied to a stop and location but god said when i move you
you this time. Leave all that stuff behind. You don't need no bag. You don't need no shoes. You don't need no winter clothes. Because wherever you go, God said, because you connected to me, I will provide for you. Is there anybody in Stonewell ready to relocate and say, God, wherever you send me, I will go. You will make room for me. You will give me what I need. Is there anybody in the house to say, Lord, I won't look back. I can't go back to the way it used to be. Say yeah. Say yeah. If you're not going to look back, say yeah. Look at your name and say name. Don't look back. Don't look back. Don't look back. Don't go back. God will take care of you. Say yeah. Say yeah. Say yeah. Come on and give God a praise.
anybody today who made up in their mind that I'm not going to look back. I'm not going to look back wherever you are. On Facebook, wherever you are, in the parking lot, if you're on your front porch, that if we can't see you, God sees you. That the day you made up in your mind that this is an individual journey that we've got to make. Can I help somebody? Is somebody saying that my wife is struggling. My husband is struggling. I cannot get my children in the church like they're supposed to. Can I tell you what the Bible says? It says a sanctified wife will sanctify the husband. A sanctified husband will sanctify the wife. So Pastor Dewey, what you're trying to tell me is I should keep coming even when they don't? Yeah, because in your coming, I can see the Spirit of God pulling them back in this direction. Don't do anything. Don't say anything. Just just keep coming. Look at your neighbor. Somebody need to hear that. Just, just keep coming. Just keep coming. Just keep coming. And what happens is God is going to allow families to come in. God is going to allow generations to come in. But what I ask you to do is don't look back from this moment. There's pain in your past. There's abuse in your past. There is hurt in your past. Nobody needs to look at that again. You already know what it looks like. You know what it smells like. To the point that guess what you say? You say, I guess I deserve this. If the angels can grasp the hand of Lot, who was connected to Abraham, and pull them out of Sodom and Gomorrah, surely don't you know God will pull you out of what you're going through? This is your moment. This is your time. Wherever you are, lift up your hands right now. I surrender. <laughs> Four. Change. It's got to start with you. It's got to start with you. is your word. Lord, help us to build on that word. That we no longer look back to uncleanliness and ungodliness. But God, that we look to you. Now God, you lead us to right, guide us, direct us, and protect us. From this day forward, God, we are asking you right now that we want to see a change in us. We want you to see something in us. 
that resembles you. God, we ask you to do it right now. In the name of Jesus, we do pray. And every heart said, Amen. For that individual who don't know Jesus as their personal Savior, today is a great day for you to give your heart to God. Romans 10.9 simply says, if you believe in your heart and confess with your mouth, God says, you can be saved. If that's you right now, and you're ready to give your heart to God, you may say, well, Pastor, but I got a lot of work to do. You can't do that work. Let God do it for you. If you were once saved, and you fell out of the will of God, and you want to get reconnected, I dare you to say, I want to be reconnected. If that's you right now, just step out to the middle of the street. If you want to get saved, you want to be reconnected. If you would love to be a part of Stonewall Nation, that God is expanding throughout the globe, I believe it by faith. If you want to be a part of Stonewall Nation today, on Facebook, I dare you to hashtag disciple. But if you're on the ground right now, why don't you step out by faith and say, I believe this is where God wants me to be. Not only that, we've instituted something called watch care, which means that if you are still a member of another church, but you're not attending, and you want to do work here, you can come under our watch care program. If that's you on Facebook, I dare you to type hashtag watch care. If there's anybody today that want to step out by faith, God is pulling you. You feel the Lord pulling you and tugging you. Don't resist any longer. Step out by faith and say, this is what I want to do. If that's you, step out by faith today. If that's you, will there be anyone today? Will there be anyone today? Amen. Amen. Most gracious and awesome God, as we come before you right now, we ask you, O oh God, to have your way in all of our lives. God, we ask you, O oh God, to touch those individuals who showed up today, to made up in their mind that they won't look back. God, for those individuals who may have joined us on Facebook by one way or the other, we say thank you. We ask you, God, to touch them virtually as well as you're touching us physically. God, we ask you, God, to, as we leave this place, that we never leave your presence. Thank you, God, for reminding us that we can no longer look back. Because there is a rescue, there's rebellion, there's retribution. Not only that, God, there is relocation. A place where you're going to provide for us. Let us make up in our mind that if we can leave with, every, with nothing, as long as we got you on our side, we have everything. Now, God, bless this week. Bless our minds, bless our hearts. That wherever our foot touch shall be blessed. God, we plead the precious blood of Jesus upon every life and every heart. In Jesus' name we do pray. And every heart said, Amen, Amen, Amen. God bless you. We love you. Come on and give God a hand of praise. Amen. Have a blessed week. Amen. Wave to somebody before you leave.